Good morning. Good morning, Ayush. Good morning, Sanjay. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Saurabh. Good morning, uh, Ayush. Good morning, Nagesh. Good morning, Nagesh, sir. Nagesh sir, you are not audible at all. Are you speaking to us? At all? Now? Now you are. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everybody. My volume was low. Uh, Mera hai? Ah, your volume is coming well, sir. Ayush, please check your panelists. Are they there? Mamta, Lakshmi, who's the timer? Achaneha. Timer is Gihan. Gihan Pranav. Gihan is here. Okay, Neha. Uh, Neha Pranav. Mamta Lakshmi Jyoti. Oh, hi, good evening, Nagesh. Uh, can I use two separate devices for audio and video because my uh, audio is not working on my primary device? Anything, so anything is fine here. Yeah. It's good. You can join in from two devices. Okay, because okay. the primary device is causing some problem with the audio. Okay, no problem. No problem. Are okay. you a pan? You are a panelist, no? Yes. So, which one will you come on video? The other one? Yes, I will. I will uh mark the. I will mark the audio device as secondary. Okay. The audio device, you can say Ayush Goel backup. Okay. Thank you. Sudarshan Sashadri is uh, whose contact? Uh, who contacted Sudarshan? Who Sudarshan Sashadri's contact? Not mine. Uh, I think I have his number. Morning, Lakshmi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone.
um ayush all your panelists are there can you please confirm yes i'm confirming yes she actually is there uh ha uh, dhwani will join at 10 yeah. 10 i will call jyoti once jyoti is here yes, jyoti is also here uh, yes dhwani will join in uh, around 10 5 so yes she lakshmi and jyoti are here dhwani okay. is joining okay okay po is here SA is not here. Uh, Nagesh sir, please call Pranav Pothan. No, I am doing the SA, not to worry. Okay. So, uh, Nagesh is the SA and uh, PO is here. Uh, Who is the team out? PO is the team out. Neha, you are the team out only, right? Yes. I quickly want to do an audio check. Am I audible? Haan, but video pe nahi aana hai kya? Haan, haan, video pe nahi aana hai kya? Okay. So, uh, next is... Uh, Mamta, Mamta, Mamta. I have messaged Mamta. No, you have to call call. Now, I have to call call. I have to call call. call call. You have to call call. Sir, sir, sir. You have to call call. You have to call call. Mamta, Mamta, Mamta. 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 Mamta, और ममता का पैनलिस्ट भी कंफर्म करना है और हुज आयुष्स इवैल्यूएटर लक्ष्मी यस नो यस नो आई एम ममता इज इवैल्यूएटर ममता इज इवैल्यूएटर इज लक्ष्मी सो द फर्स्ट पैनलिस्ट इज नॉट पर मेंबर्स लोग ओके ओके लेट मी कॉल हर फर्स्ट संजय नागेश एंड प्रभा ऑल द थ्री आर देयर यस सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर yeah, yeah. Panelists are there for Mamta. Mamta has to join. Now she's joined. Yes, sir. Oh, good to go. The name. Sir. Yes. Good morning, Toastmasters. A very warm welcome to the Sunday special meeting. What a wonderful day we have. A sunny day after the rains yesterday night. I'm sure your Sunday morning has begun well. I'm Nagish Ramamurthy, your SA for today's meeting. Let me highlight a few important things that are necessary for this particular meeting. This meeting will go on for almost about two hours. Request you all to stay here and listen to two panel discussions that we have from two of our wonderful speakers who are moderating it. Please be on the video as long as it is possible and your bandwidth permits it. And as far as audio is concerned, unmute yourself only when you need to speak or when you are asked or called to speak. Toastmasters doesn't restrict anybody on speaking about any topics. However, when you're talking about anything related to sex, religion, politics, be mindful of not hurting people and their sentiments. We request all the speakers and guests to please come on camera and give the support required for the project of people who are taking the project and the panelists. This meeting will be recorded. We will use the recording in our social media channels and for marketing purposes. So those who wish to let us know that recording should not be done, please let us know now. Now, let me take you to somebody who is going to run this meeting after me here afterwards. The person is a financial analyst in a multinational company who's a very fitness enthusiast and loves to play badminton. The president of Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. May I request Toastmaster Neha Jain to step forward and take this meeting forward. Over to you, Toastmaster Neha Jain. Thank you so much, Toastmaster DTM Nagesh, for 
that lovely introduction. It's a bright Sunday morning, and I'm sure all of us are filled with energy and enthusiasm. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. All right. So, fellow Toastmasters and guests, that was our Sergeant at Arms, DTM Nagesh Ramamurthy. Let's give a huge round of applause for him. A very good morning to all of you present here. It's my pleasure to be presiding over the Gabby special meeting on this bright Sunday morning. I call this meeting to order and I would welcome and acknowledge the presence of all the members and guests for this meeting. For the benefit of guests, I would like to reiterate that Toastmasters is a home for people who wish to face their fear of public speaking and not only that, if you love to connect and network with others, if you want to hone your leadership skills, Toastmasters is indeed the place for you. And today, we have a very interesting special meeting, which hosts not one, but two panel discussion. I'm, I'm really excited to what's in store for us for the rest of the meeting today. So without any further ado, I would like to call upon the timer for today to introduce his roles and responsibilities. He is an electrical engineer and uh, he is from Sri Lanka. Outside of Toastmasters, he loves playing badminton just like I do. He loves gardening and cooking as well. He is also passionate about welfare and charity activities. Quite interesting. It's none other than Toastmaster Gihan. Over to you, Toastmaster Gihan. Thank you very much. That warm welcome and introduction, Toastmaster of the day. And good morning, uh, all Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As the timer today, I will time the panel discussions and the evaluations. And also, I will alert each session, timing, raising the yellow, green, yellow, and red cards for the Panel discussion, the allocated time will be 20 to 40 minutes. At the 20 minute, I will raise green card. At 30 minute, I will raise, I will raise yellow card. And at 40 minute, I will raise red card. And for the evaluations, the timing will be two to three minutes. By from by two minutes, I will raise green card. And two and a half minute, I will raise yellow card. And at the third minute, I will raise red card. And for the evaluations, there will be 30 minute grace, 30 second grade period, upper and lower, lower side. So then when call upon during the meeting, I will uh, show the report as timer. Or to Toastmaster with the tweet. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Gihan, for that elaborate introduction of your role. Now, moving on. We have someone for the first panel moderation who is a software development developer at Cognizant Bangalore. She hails from the steel city of India, Bokaro, Jharkhand. Yes, the land that MS Dhoni belongs to. And she indeed hopes to meet him one day. Her hobbies include traveling and clicking lots of photos. And she recently covered not just Uti and Kurg, but Darjeeling as well. It's none other than our panel moderator, the first panel moderator for today, Toastmaster Mamta Singh. Over to you, Toastmaster Mamta. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Neha Jain. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and my dear guest. The topic for today, for first panel discussion is India is on the rise, a powerhouse in the making. I totally believe in this topic. The recent space exploration of India landing on the South Pole of Moon uh, in a budget less than a Hollywood movie, uh, uh, it's, it, it's really great. And this fact is not hidden from the world how India did it. Being being from uh, like be it from like 
a developing country india knows that which corner to cut and which corner to save we can say a jugad by jugad india did it and not just like space exploration if we talk about any other sector uh, like the it sector relationship with india uh, with other countries uh, bringing the direct uh, foreign investment in our country or the world knows how we tackled with the covid situation india was the country to develop vaccine covisild not just developing vaccine uh, exporting the paracetamol and other basic medicines to other country being a developing country so india did it and i totally believe in the fact that it, india is going to be a powerhouse in the upcoming future now let's understand all these details in depthness from the power, from the knowledge we have in the house we have the right source of knowledge we have the panelists who are from the engineering background we have the panelists from the private sector by background which we can say white collar product management job we have the panelists from the finance background what could have been the better so let's leverage the knowledge we have in the house and understand what the future is going to be for the india now let me call upon the panel one the panel one is somebody who is a who is passionate about his work at home in a profession or with toast masters from an early age he was passionate about engineering and um, was namta i'm sorry um, there is a slight uh, this thing i just before you introduce the panel moderator can i uh, i think the evaluator one has to be invited to read out the project guidelines right neha uh, we did not have the project guidelines read out yes 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 can you please invite the evaluator one uh, sorry mamta sorry about that sorry sorry for the slight confusion but yes i'm going to call upon the evaluator one of the panel moderator mamta uh, she is a behavioral and leadership trainer and uh, working with akshay patra foundation she facilitates training program across india that upskills and motivates the frontline workers of her organization she is a passionate speaker a, a caring mom and an enthusiastic toastmaster none other than i'd like to call upon toastmaster lakshmi sujatha to read out the uh, project guidelines a uh, project objectives of the first panel moderator thank you so much toastmaster neha and a very good morning to everyone present here the target speaker for today Uh, Toastmaster Mamta is attempting her L five P two project on panel discussions on how to moderate a panel discussion. The purpose of this project is for the member to apply his or her skills as a public speaker and leader to facilitate a panel discussion. Some of the points that I would be noting down as an evaluator would be the amount of time that is spent, uh, you know, in the discussion. and how the moderator is able to navigate the questions and ensuring the discussion is relevant to the topic the speech is uh, 20 to 40 minutes in length wishing my target speaker toastmaster mamta all the very best as she takes on the role of the panel moderator today Thank you so much, Toastmaster Lakshmi. Now the stage is all yours, Toastmaster Mamta. Toastmaster Mamta, are you there? I think she's having a tech problem. She's froze. I think she's back. Yeah. Yeah. Toastmaster Mamta, are you able to hear us? Yeah, I can hear. Yes. Now the stage is all yours. You can start you, from the beginning, Mamta. I think you lost the flow. You start from the beginning. From the beginning, uh, from the topic itself. 
Yeah, yeah. From the very beginning, we'll uh, we'll edit out that portion of it. Let me upload it. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Toastmaster sort of. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and my dear guest, India is on the rise. It's the powerhouse in the making. And I totally believe this line. Uh, if I talk about the recent exploration, space exploration of India on Chandrayaan 3, it is the first country to land on the South Pole. And India did it in a budget less than a Hollywood movie. And this fact is not hidden from the world. Being a develop developing country, being, being a country which is having the population, most of the people are from the middle cl class background and it can it is a positive factor. And uh, because of this only, uh, we know which corner to cut and which corner to not cut to save uh, the money. And uh, uh, in, in a very less budget, India did it. And not just the ex uh, space exploration. Uh, if I talk about from the other angles also, like the IT boom, uh, India is the first country like we can uh, we can say that bangalore is known to be the silicon valley of india it is the country which is outsourcing uh, so software development services to the rest of the world be it from the it boom be it bringing the foreign direct investment to the country or relationship with uh, of india with other countries powerful countries like us uk uh, russia all those countries we can see that india is indeed on the rise uh, now, it's just our point. Let's understand all those things in detail from the powerhouse, we from the no knowledge we have in the house. We have the right source of go golden knowledge. We have the panelists and the panelists are from, from we can say like uh, the backbone of our country from the engineering background. We, the panelists we have from product management background and we have from the finance background. What could have been better than that, right? So. Let me call upon the panel one. The panel one is somebody who is passionate about his work at home in a profession or with Toastmasters. From an early age, he was passionate about engineering and was fa fascinated by how buildings are built. The thrill of construction projects got him to be a part of the building from the age of just 18. He says life gave him early opportunities outside, outside of Toastmasters and Toastmasters happened to him very late. He is none other than uh, DTM Nagesh sir. Please welcome DTM Nagesh sir as panel one. Panel two. Panel two is somebody who is a fun loving ambitious and sporty person. Apart from her profession as product manager, she finds delight in exploring new places and immersing herself in different cultures through travels. She is none other than Toastmaster Prabha. Please welcome Toastmaster Prabha. Coming to the panel three. Panel three is, is a chartered accountant by profession. He likes playing cricket, chess and loves traveling. Please welcome Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Now we have all the panelists in the house. Let me ask my first question to panel one and I'll, I'll be rotating this question to panel two and panel three. Toastmaster uh, Nage sir, can you tell me what, in your opinion, are the key factors contributing to India's recent economic growth and development? Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Mamta, for this question of such a wonderful question. This reminds me of uh, one of the earliest prime ministers had said, China is growing beyond what India is because of their population. And recently, about a decade ago, somebody else also had said, we are not developing because we are overpopulated. It's such a great contradiction after so many decades. So what I would say here is, what has triggered to our economic growth? There are three major things as per my opinion. First one is the population. Imagine if you had the population of the country as we had in 60s and 70s. Do you think 
we would have had so much of opportunities, so much of growth. I don't think so. So for me, population is one of the biggest trigger. Second one is India has got great natural resources, be it the coastline, be it the land available, or be it the anything below the land also, the mines and other things that we have, the agricultural sector, the civilization, the earlier civilization, I feel that is the biggest trigger that has led to the growth beyond any other countries having. And the third and the biggest, what I feel that has led to this growth today in India is the talent that we have. Look at the talent in Toastmasters today. The talent has been leveraged so very well by the country, taking the opportunities as it comes, whether it is from East to India or West to India, we have grown tremendously. I would say, according to me, these are the three things. We have great population and talent in them, and we have also leveraged the natural resources that we have. Back to you, moderator. Thank you, uh, DTM Nagesh, sir. I totally agree the population. We are a country having 50%, more than 50% of our population who are youth. And you talked about the history, like 80s or 90s. Uh, our population, or we can say the youth was completely dependent on government to give us the job. Now, the time has gone. gone. We are like the, uh, the rise of the startup cultures, the rise of the shows like Sark Tank India is giving us a new, uh, new, new way to think, to create our own job for ourselves. So I believe this is a reason. It could be the reason why India is growing despite having a huge population. Thank you for bringing your points. Now, uh, we have panel two, Prabha, Toastmaster Prabha. What, what's your take on this question? Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, so at present, where the economic growth of almost all the countries in the world is tottering, India is marching on the road of development uh, with economic growth of 6 to 7% in the last quarter. It is ready to become third biggest economy of the world soon in seven years. So in broader sense, the economic growth and development of India, in my opinion, is probably uh, because of the choices India is making and uh, the foreign policy that has been adopted uh, from past few decades. So India has started pursuing policy um, that is aligned with its market interest. So if we look at the history of 2000, years back uh, india was amongst uh, india was third largest economy in the world but when british uh, uh, captured india in 18th century the economy dropped to 2% of the entire world uh, sorry the uh, uh, 2000 years ago the um, gdp of india was contributing one third of the total gdp of world but then when um, british uh, captured india the gdp dropped to two to three percent uh, of the world's uh, total gdp but then um, from i think 90s uh, 1990s uh, we have started taking uh, more initiative and india has become open to the uh, foreign trade and foreign um, um, developments uh, and before that so many uh, there were so many opportunities India had that it can um, invest in um, uh, foreign uh, in uh, trades and uh, several other things but later on um, from past few decades it has opened up for further developments in in terms of foreign trade then um, um, with that uh, the state uh, the geopolitical state Status of India has rise uh, has risen um, uh, tremendously. Where uh, if you if you observe the world today, we can easily see uh, Russia um, and China led Eastern Pole, and then you have a US led uh, Western Pole, and India is in the middle of the uh, uh, middle of these two poles. On one side, India is a part of influential Eastern groups like BRICS and SEO. On the other side, India is an important part of groups like Quad and I2U2. 
um today india decide its own foreign policies itself and according to its needs india doesn't work under the influence of any other country the best example that we saw when uh, when russia ukraine war started and india is the only country in the world during this war with which both of these countries are making contacts with and even both of these countries hope for continuous help from india and i think it is because of our independent foreign policies that in terms of both these countries uh, uh, both are uh, making uh, contacts with us and have a, a, you know want to be allied with us thanks over to you absolutely Master. absolutely toastmaster prabha i totally agree with that uh, the like the modification of the foreign direct investment and the geography of india is contributing earlier in the days our uh, uh, policies were so strict that no any foreign company was ready to come in our country and invest now we have modified uh, we have like the ease of doing the business in india has grown and it is the reason why india is growing thank you for bringing that point now uh, we have the third panelist uh, sanjay jain what's your take on this question yeah good morning to all uh, we were uh, the 10th uh, largest economy in the world uh, 10 years back now we are the fifth largest economy of the world the key factors for our growth is uh, one is the economic reforms then the demographic dividend uh, which uh, uh, dtm nagesh sir has uh, pointed out demography dividend where uh, our population is one of the asset to us why because we have the engaged population in the world uh, and uh, other countries are age getting aged whereas uh, we are uh, uh, growing um, we are having a population which is employable for example uh, a survey has been done by ey in which uh, it is said that around 49% of the women are taking up higher education and we will be having this uh, education uh, uh, women population uh, which will be an asset to the country Uh, as uh, they will be uh, 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 employable in various fields like IT is there, uh, uh, electronics uh, everywhere, I mean chartered accountancy and everywhere. So it is a very well uh, policy. One other factor is the policy policy making. The country has a uh, 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 country is in the right hands and it is doing the right policy making. Why? Because if you see G twenty now, we will be uh, having the G twenty in our country. which is a very much a prestigious issue uh, to have the top 20 countries of the world uh, been in india uh, uh, today's economics uh, today's economics times has given a very good article about that uh, about the g20 uh, which is a very much uh, uh, memorable memorable and uh, uh, which will uh, take india to a very uh, uh, big heights um, with this uh, i will uh, take uh, i will uh, take uh, ask the um, uh, moderator to take back yeah i will continue yeah thank you toastmaster sanjay jain for your answer i totally agree with that again uh, like we talked about the population we talk about the dem democratic demographic dividend we talk about the ease of doing the business for uh, modification of foreign direct investment these are the points which we can summarize from the first question thank you for that now my next question would be my my next question uh, would be uh, to uh, panel 1 uh, dtm nagesh sir can you share some examples of specific industries or sector where india has made significant progress in recent years thank you you started off talking about the space isn't it the chandrayaan that's the biggest sector that everybody is talking about has grown leaps and bounds but beyond that the next what comes into anybody's mind that has grown well in this country is the software and hardware related to it but beyond that it's not just one or two i can name plenty of them which has grown over the last 2 3 decades infrastructure medicine the healthcare law outsourcing education agriculture also fisheries law, look at the logistics and i don't want to leave the sports and entertainment industries which has grown so there has been a holistic all round growth in india as i mentioned we have the 
we have the space we have the population we have the talent so we have grown everywhere but what is on two of uh, two top list for me is uh, infrastructure the cities have come closer cities have come closer for two reasons if you look at the road infrastructure once vajpay had started the golden quadrilateral from there every city has got connected with highways the road infrastructure has made cities closer people closer second talking about the same infrastructure the airports the 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 airports have grown in every second tier city also today they are connected so very well be it road or be it air, air, airlines it has given a uh, now we are on the global map as far as these two things are concerned and every other industry that i talked about revolves around these imagine if you don't have connectivity would you have grown in software and hardware in education in any other uh, areas that i am talking about so for me road infrastructure and air infrastructure is on the top two as far as india's growth is concerned as far as areas of uh, industries that are concerned yeah i totally agree uh, in your answer you mentioned that we are like uh, uh, recent chandrayaan 3 we did the progress it boom we did the progress but agricultural sector is unique for me uh, i would like to request the panelist to toastmaster prabha to uh, to bring light on this agri agricultural sector progress how that is like this sector is progressing and how this sector is like uh adding up to the gdp of the country uh thank you for asking the question um i have a very little knowledge uh about the agriculture um sector and i uh, based on my research i think there is a shift from agriculture and uh, there's a growth in the services which has played a huge role in india's growth so i would like to talk about um, uh, the uh, service sector of india which has played the uh, huge role in uh, india's growth probably uh, uh, panelist sanjay jain would like to throw light on the agriculture sector so uh, according to me india uh, uh, the startup and you know uh, startup with uh, technology and innovation has played a major role in the growth where india is it uh, india's it and software industry is well known globally it is a hub of development and maintenance uh, and support services to global countries traditional sectors uh, such as e-commerce fintech um, supply chain and logistic internet software and services do dominate the area but a strong wave of unconditional sectors such as content gaming hospitality data management and analytics are making their place on the list and uh, fintech products are growing rapidly to make the digital payment easy and improving the business quality so if you look at ubi peer to peer lending uh, uh, peer to peer lending mobile wallets uh, these are like a major game changer in terms of uh, our um, uh improving the digital uh, payment system where upi is the product of india and now it is all set to uh, adopted worldwide so it has played a major role in uh, in the growth um thirdly if you look at the a number of startups in india it is close to uh, 1 lakhs which is uh, to be precise 92 uh, 92000 uh, precisely and uh, india ranks uh, third um, Uh, third in the world in terms of having startups and the value output score of uh, those startup is again uh, uh, greater than even china and uh, other uh, several uh, great powers of the country so uh, one of the uh, factors which contributes to the growth is uh, technology and innovation second i would like to highlight the pharmaceutical sector where india's pharmacal uh, pharmaceutical sector Uh, has gained prominence uh, for its generic uh, drug manufacturing cap capabilities and vaccine production that we had seen in during pandemic where our country uh, supplied a lot of uh, 
drugs related to um, um, uh, COVID vaccination, and it is supplying affordable healthcare to both domestic and uh, international market uh, significantly. So yeah, these are the two specific industries that I wanted to highlight. Thank you. Over to you, panel. Uh, moderator panels. Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Prabha, for bringing the points. Like you, you brought the points: digital payment, rise of the UPI uh, payments, uh, tech and innovation, startup culture, healthcare sector, IT outsourcing, all those sectors where India is growing. But we should not ignore a fact that 70 percent of the population in India are from the agricultural background. Correct. They are the farmers. They are the backbone of our country. And they are not directly uh, involved in this digital payment. Digital payment, uh, I can say they could be involved, but they are not directly involved in IT out outsourcing, tech and innovation, startup, healthcare. They are not directly involved. So uh, my question to my uh, next panelist, Toastmaster Sanjay Jan, if we want to leverage this 70% of the population, which, is the, which, which are the farmers, and if we want to leverage this population to grow our country, then how it could be? Our, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, our, uh, uh, if you see, the agriculture sector is a boom in India. We are able to export uh, uh, many things. Uh, if we stop our exports, uh, uh, we can see yeah, that uh, many countries are struggling and are in starvation. Uh, so our our country is uh, very well planned, and the green revolution has brought uh, many changes in our country. We we say it is a backward uh, why because we do not know the value of what we are getting in a year. Uh, uh, we are getting at a very cheapest rate uh, all the products, everything. Uh, then also uh, our people will say that agriculturists uh, are why because there is some hidden uh, bottleneck in that. We are, there is no farm uh, reforms which our, uh, our government brought uh, the farm reforms in 2020. But uh, there was some uh, protest because of political will and things like that. So that farm reforms could not come. If it, the farm reforms would have come, then it would have changed the landscape of our farmers. Why? Because uh, uh, it is uh, uh, very interesting to understand that a farm reform is required. When you have to scale up the things, you have to bring corporates into it. And when you bring the corporates and things like that, then only the country will grow. Why? Because you get the funds easily at a very cheap rate. Uh, the funds, uh, uh, no means uh, nobody is going to invest when it is an unorganized sector and uh, things like that. Uh, people are not going to invest. Uh, for example, if we we are buying any shares in the in in the country, we see the background of the con uh, company, like what is the uh, financials and things like that. Then only we start investing in that. Uh, by, by in, in unorganized sector, uh, we do not know what is the background and things like that. Why? Because nothing, nothing is published. So, so it is a thing that uh, uh, a cooperative, uh, cooperative movement will take India to a great heights, like Amul cooperative movement, which has taken, which has uh, beaten the MNCs companies to a large extent. Like that, we should have uh, at each and every state level some cooperative movement, so that the country will go to a next level and uh, things will flow. So, it is my take on this here. I absolutely agree with Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Thank you for bringing the point like the Green Revolution. We know that uh, when, we got, uh, when we got independence in 1947, after that India was like not in a good situation. And uh, in 19, I think in 1955, Green Revolution uh, came uh, that was proposed by uh, Indira Gandhi. And after that, the agricultural sector, in, which is supposed to be the 70% of 70%, uh, which 70% of the population does that agricultural sector group boom but you have uh, highlighted the points how to how to grow this agricultural sector also you highlighted like bringing the farm reform bring the example of the amul how the cooperative movement came and like uh, uh, like increased the uh, business of amul and it has increased to such extent that it has even beaten the uh, mncs like F we have the every day so amul has beaten the F fmcg business also with such cooperative movement thank you for bringing the point toastmaster sanjay jain now uh, let me ask the next question my next question would be to panel one it is uh, 
what are some of the challenges and opportunity in faces in terms of infrastructure development to support its growth opportunities and challenges are um, two sides of the same coin always there is a dichotomy now look around you when you walk when you drive just when you sit in the sit out what do you see sound smoke and smell i would say the unplanned growth of this country is the biggest challenge not just in 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 the infrastructure but in any sector if you stake even in the e-commerce industry the way it has grown uh, i think to some extent there has been no planning and regulation that's one challenge that i see where there has to be some amount of regulations that needs to come in secondly i would want to talk about the opportunities that you asked uh, asked um opportunities are around looking at those areas which are still untapped we just not talked about uh, agriculture um if you see and uh, you would have heard lot of people are leaving the rural areas which is about 70 to 75% of the population coming back to the urban areas but lesser known stories are where urban population is going back to the farming lot of people are doing it especially in the dairy sector that area is still not very fully tapped so there is a great potential over there while we are growing like this there is another challenge and i see an opportunity there the challenge is the corruption that we all know is very rampant the opportunity there is again i tell that people will have to focus those in power and in legislature will have to look at how do we corrupt this otherwise i am telling you in any industry there is going to be an un uh, uncontrolled growth which will lead us to nowhere i would say it could be a catastrophe that may be happening in the years to come so there are challenges there are opportunities when there are challenges those opportunities which are coming in in the way will have to be looked at and will have to uh, probably work around it back to you panel market thank you thank you thank you dtk nagesh sir for bringing your point you have brought two points unplanned growth and uncontrolled growth right so uh, as per my understanding growth is a growth whether it's a planned growth or unplanned growth at the end of the day it is contributing to the growth and the rise of the country so how unplanned growth or uncontrolled growth could be a challenge this question is to my uh, second panelist prabha um could you please repeat the question okay so my question is unplanned growth and uncontrolled growth at the end of the day these are called the growth these are contributing to the country so how it could be a challenge so when when the growth is unplanned and uncontrolled um it it may cause a uh, havoc uh, uh in all over the uh, uh in all the states of india probably everywhere and it will be very difficult to measure the growth of the uh, uh, growth of the uh, in various sectors where this is uncontrolled and unplanned so in order to uh, uh, curb this situation uh, what we can have is like we already have this uh, uh, digitalization which is making uh, make, which is which is which can help government to measure or the uh, or uh, you know uh, measure the growth of these uh, different types of growth and ultimately it does uh, contribute to the growth of uh, entire uh, economy but the problem would be is that uh, we won't be able to put it in the papers and won't, won't be able to uh, you know uh, count it in the gdp as such 
So if you look at the GDP uh, calculation, there are four major factors which contributes to it is that uh, consumer consumption, then there's private and public uh, spending, and then there is, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, exports, imports factor. And then other one is uh, uh, this thing, I sorry, I forgot, but like uh, in, in these, all these consumption and export import, if things are happening uh, unplanned and uncontrolled, there is no supervision over that, then uh, we won't be able to, uh, you know, take take in account of these things uh, while uh, calculating our GDP. So it has to be regulated, but I think uh, we are moving towards that path where, um, uh, where because of the Aadhaar system digitalization and uh, the tracking is there, what is happening all over the India, uh, we are able to track. So yeah, I think it's going towards the right direction. Thanks. Over to you, panel moderator. Thank you, Toastmaster Prabha. You reminded me a point that you cannot uh, make something grow if you cannot measure that thing. And you have brought a right point regarding the tracking and supervision. We have the UPI payment. We have like uh, uh, tracking we, UPI payment, Aadhaar, digitalization. We are all such tools to track the growth and development. I totally agree with that. Now, moving to my third panelist, uh, Toastmaster Sanjay Jain, what's your take on this question? Challenges and opportunities, challenges for the India to grow. Uh, major challenges for India is the fund, uh, funding and investments, uh, then uh, regulatory and bureaucratic hurdles, uh, then quality and maintenance, uh, uh, environmental and uh, social impact, and uh, skill uh, shortages. Now I'll be elaborating on this. One is the fund and investments. Uh, uh, we we should have a, uh, we should have a policy where we can attract a, a good amount of FDI into the country. If we are able to attract them, then uh, there will be an all round progress in every field, whether it is infrastructure, whether it's education, everything means uh, so that uh, the uh, the if uh, proper amount of fund is uh, coming to the country and. Uh, uh, it will develop means unemployment. It will solve the problem of unemployment and everything. So that uh, fund funding is the major challenge, which uh, because of various regulations uh, like FEMA regulations and things like that, the fund fund restrictions are coming and uh, things like that. So the government can uh, means uh, think over and bring some simplified uh, process so that uh, funding funding from foreign countries can come to India easily. As now uh, India India's uh, story has started and uh, things. Uh, uh, it is the right time to have a right policy and to attract the funds. One is that then regulatory and bureaucratic uh, hurdles. We have a lot of, uh, we say that ease of doing business. But uh, today, uh, uh, if you see uh, there are changes, I, I appreciate that there are various changes coming in like GST and things like that. But till now, uh, we are not able to have a single window uh, for all these uh, uh, yeah, compliances. Whereas we have to go to various websites and do things like that. Instead of that, if you have one single platform to solve all the problems uh, uh, so that it becomes easy for a common man to think and even for co companies to invest in that thing. Then the third is uh, environment and social uh, impact. Uh, various projects have uh, uh, been in bottleneck uh, because of environment clearance. Because of uh, anybody coming and uh, putting a writ or something in the court and saying that there is an environment uh, thing uh, without understanding the economic benefits. If you see in Gujarat, uh, Narmada, uh, Narmada Canal, uh, uh, Narmada, uh, which was uh, uh, which was, uh, at uh, Sabavati Ashram, which was uh, means uh, stopped because of uh, some movement. Uh, but after its, uh, um, uh, its implementation, uh, we can see the benefits uh, means it has gone to the forest uh, forest uh, uh, place so that uh, um, it is uh, for the country and people to understand that uh, any change will have resistance but uh, whether it is good for the country and good for the people or not that has to be taken into account before uh, deciding that and stopping any progress so back to the uh, panel uh, moderator yeah. Absolutely. I totally agree. You you have uh, brought a point regarding the Sabarbati Ashram in Gujarat and similar incident. Uh, it reminded me of a similar incident. What happened with Nano Project in the West, West Bengal because of certain policies 
uh, the nano uh, that manufacturing of the nano vehicle was was not successful in west bengal bengal because of its policy so i must say that the local policies also are somewhere hindering the growth of the country and you have brought another point the lack of funding but yeah currently it's the problem that we do not have much fund but looking at the recent growth of the india a lot of foreign investment are, are coming and investing in our country look at the stocks of companies look at the nifty how it is growing and not just the private sector look at the psu or even the defense sex sector like the recent launch of launch of chandrayaan 3 has just boomed the defense sector stocks like hal stock is booming aerospace sector stocks are booming so i must say that this is the problem but i am very bullish about the future that uh, in the future it will be eradicated and it will lead us to uh, make our economy a uh, 30 30 30 trillion economy in the future thank you now my uh, next question would be uh, to panel 1 in what ways can india leverage its cultural diversity and heritage to strength strengthen its position on the global stage well cultural diversity i'll take off from uh, what you asked me challenges and opportunities last time there is an opportunity that i missed uh, mentioning uh, about you travel anywhere from the place you are today sitting 50 kilometers in any direction three things change the culture the food and the climate so there is a great opportunity for us to look at one big area that has been still untapped the cultural tourism i would say how many of you have also looked at eco village uh, going to a uh, eco village during the weekends there is a booking for 3 months if you have to go there with your family in a weekend some of the areas you will get it in uh, maybe 15 days 20 days booking but bigger ones the best ones 2 2 and a half months of booking is there so going back to the roots is one big opportunity is what i would say now talking about the cultural diversity we have 28 states and 8 union territories when we drew the border we all drew it based on the languages and the culture that is prevalent in the country so we have to leverage that and look at how there is an opportunity there to see that a new industry can flourish i would say cultural diversity and the heritage of this country has a greater impact so much so that lot of people outside the country come to us seeking the way we have led our lives be it yoga be it traditional medicinal uh, practices be it staying here and doing the uh, medical tourism that has, that is flourishing it's all because of the kind of heritage and the cultural diversity we have that's one big opportunity is what i see is still untapped but you panel moderator yeah i completely agree like the yoga and the traditional medicine medical practices which we can say ayurveda and now i can say that people are getting aware of that uh, the benefits of ayurveda a lot thank you for bringing the point uh, the same question i want to rotate to my panel to toastmaster prabha sure. so um, india's rich cultural and uh, heritage uh, can be a powerful uh, asset for strengthening its position on global stage leveraging these assets effectively can enhance india's soft power and global influence so some of the ways that i think it can leverage its uh, cultural diversity and heritage is through uh, tourism uh, promotion so having di diverse cultural and uh, diverse culture and heritage it is a major attraction for tourists and it can boost economy and improve india's global image we have so many in every part every state represents a different culture here in india and uh, 
we uh, and and pop, uh, people coming over from a uh, world finds different uh, i mean uh, going to different places in india and they they resonate with those places because first they, uh, those sort of uh, culture is missing in india uh, uh, in other parts of the world and second is our culture is very unique and different and uh, so if we can uh, you know uh, promote tourism and have a clean or uh, uh, sustainable ways to uh, promote tourism it can uh, uh, contribute to the growth and uh, and uh, provide the global uh, provide the I mean, position in the global stage. Second is cultural export. We have music, dance, cinema, fashion, and cuisine. These these things have global appeal. So, uh, if you have noticed, because of the India's great digital presence, our music and dance styles have been getting adopted by different parts of the world, and we have been seeing, um, I mean, uh, conventional songs or maybe songs from 90s or 70s getting danced by uh, so many performers from the uh, outside world then india india can also host uh, international cultural festival and exposition to attract global attention just like nmacc was uh, conducted by nita mani to preserve and promote uh, indian arts so it brought out a, gl a glorious and authentic side of the india that is many times overshadowed shadowed by uh, other things and lastly um, uh, like uh, DTM uh, Nagesh sir has mentioned traditional medicine and yoga. India's traditional medicine system like Ayurveda and practices like uh, yoga have gained international recognition already and promoting these more will definitely strengthen its position at global stage. Um, various uh, meditation programs uh, have been conducted uh, throughout the world by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Sadhguru and uh, other foundations have already reached to millions of foreign people to attract uh, uh, meditation and uh, inner peace, which are um, so one of the example that I recently uh, I saw is when I visited Auroville, that is Matri Mandir. Auroville is a place where I saw uh, people from uh, um, like uh, France and other Europe countries where um, I got to see the uh, different culture. And I mean, it's, uh, it is, it was so different and unique that uh, I was wowed by how India is attracting different uh, people from the world. Over to you, panel moderator. Thank you to Master Prabha for bringing your points. Now we are running out of time. Just a quick, quick question to the audience. Now we are moving towards the Q&A round. Any questions? from the audience? I do have a question. Okay, I cannot see any raised hands. I do have a Okay, yeah, uh, DTM, sorry. We have time. Please, please ask your question. Okay. Uh, no, not really a question, but actually I'll play the devil's advocate here. Uh, you know, I, I hear all this chest thumping about India and uh, being a global powerhouse and all that. It's all over the internet, right? And uh, I'm, I'm speaking in a group where except to everyone else is an Indian. Uh, but I'll still ask this question that uh, how much of this is something that... Uh, you know, how much of this is covering up also that things are not going well, right? And uh, we always keep talking about uh, this toxic positivity and the toxic optimism. And I seriously have a problem with that. Um, like one of the panelists mentioned about uh, people uh, filing PILs uh, to stop development. Uh, the PILs are filed also because there is a reason for PILs to be filed. It is a real problem that the industry is actually eroding Taj Mahal. It is damaging Taj Mahal. So if a PIL has been filed for that, for Yamuna and for Taj Mahal, that PIL has been filed for a reason. So um, I, I have a serious issue with people uh, pushing things under the carpet. And I just wanted to hear what the, you know, what the panelists, or at least maybe Nagesh or anyone, I mean, what is your thought on this? Uh, you know, isn't there too much of toxic positivity that's happening in this country? I, I want to uh, rotate this question to DTM Nagesh, sir. I was about to take it. Yes, there is toxicity. Toxicity. 
there is a lot of things that is going under the carpet. That's the biggest challenge. I mentioned about corruption. Anything you raise is actually pushed underground, I use what I would say in, in our country. Opportunities are not, uh, is not being leveraged well. While there is opportunity, somebody tries to do something, there is definitely an opposition. While you talk about Taj Mahal, I have been seeing Taj Mahal since 70s, the way it is getting eroded. 70s to 2023, what have we done about it? Nobody wants to preserve something that is precious in this country. Let alone a monument, even a human being, if he or she is precious, is killed for the individual benefits, for the benefits, short-term myopic vision of people, and also very short-term big gains that we have. It's all political in this country. The opportunities are a plenty, a plenty, a plenty. But nobody wants to look at those opportunities, keeping aside selfish motives. Everybody has got a hidden agenda. When something erupts, it is blown out of proportion and nobody wants to give a two hoots about it. Any news that is big in proportion is forgotten very easily. We have this tendency of forgetting things. So I would say it's the biggest ghost that we have, the corruption, selfishness, individual motives, the hidden agendas. It is not just in this country. Maybe it is more in proportion in this country, but every country has it. Only that we don't get to hear it. We only look at Indian news. We are busy with Indian news. It is happening everywhere. So I would say we all have to focus on that. There is a need to look at this dichotomy together. Opportunity and the challenges. There are powerhouses which work on opportunity. I wish there are people who bring in focus on the challenges also that we have. Maybe there is a big business to work on these challenges. I don't know. Maybe there is. Try to ask your question in the chat. We am sure uh, a panelist will reply to you. All we are at the end of our discussion. Thank you each and every for participating in this talk. And we have a lot of takeaways from today. Thank you, Toastmaster Mamta. That was indeed a wonderful panel discussion. I really love the poise and calmness that you conducted the panel discussion. And of course, the insightful opinions that our panelists, DTM Nagesh, Toastmaster Sanjay, and uh, Toastmaster Prabha had to share. I think it was a fantastic panel discussion. And thank you for conducting it so wonderfully well. And now, moving on. We have one more panel discussion on a very unique and a different topic from what we already discussed. And for this, um, and to introduce the project objectives of the panel moderator too, I would like to call upon the evaluator of the panel moderator, who is a banker by pro profession and a storyteller by passion. He believes that Toastmasters is a platform that gives voice to your voice. That indeed is very true. It's none other than DTM Sudarshan Sheshadri. Over to you, Toastmaster, DTM Sudarshan. Thank you very much, Madam <laughs> We've already witnessed a rousing panel discussion on a topic which is close to all our hearts. The next one promises to be exactly that and a little more. In my capacity as the evaluator of this panel, the center of attention for me would be the panel moderator, Toastmaster Ayush Goyal, and 
the objectives with which he is going to conduct the panel discussion is to demonstrate his skill as a public speaker in which he will try and attempt to lead and facilitate a panel discussion. The time allocated is 20 to 40 minutes and the topic of this particular discussion as Neha has already revealed is extremely interesting. It deals with body positivity. I would like to wish all the very best to Ayush and his panel. Back to you, Madam Presiding Officer. Thank you so much, DDM Sudarshan, for setting the project objectives, right? And now, <clears throat> our panel moderator, too, is from the pink city, Jaipur, and currently lives in Hyderabad. He works as a business analyst in a startup. His hobbies include reading, writing, watching movies, dancing, and exploring new places. Yes, indeed, I'm talking about Toastmaster Ayush Goel. Over to you, Toastmaster Ayush. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, Ayush, very clear. Okay. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this panel discussion on the topic the two sides of body positivity. Now, introducing a topic a little. We, I think every one of us in our childhoods would have come across some person who has been bullied because of their body or we ourselves might have been bullied. This impact must have impacted uh, our confidence to do certain things in life. Almost everything, but yes. And as we grow older, we try to find things, solutions out of it. And one term that you come across is body positivity. Now, I don't know if it is a concept, strategy, buzzword, or whatever it is. So for this, I have decided, I have called upon a few experts who can, who can enlighten us upon this topic. They are from a variety of backgrounds, so, so that we get a broader viewpoint of, on this topic. Now, I would like to introduce uh, the panelists, who are the experts who are the panelists for the discussion. Our first panelist is a certified image consultant and soft skill trainer by profession. She has trained more than 1,000 students to become a better communicator and leader. She believes that everyone should respect their body, which has been blessed by nature, and treat it likewise. So invite our first pan panelist, Sheila Chini Hegde. Thank you, Ayush. It's my pleasure to be moderating here as a panel uh, moderator. Thank you very much for having me here. Our second panelist is a personality development coach and an artist. She has helped many people improve and excel in the field with soft, her soft skill training. Her, according to her, body positivity is nothing but being comfortable in your own skin and however you, you are, just feel, just feel positive towards it and accept yourself and your flaws. Our second panelist is Dhwani Adesara. Thank you so much and hello everybody. Thank you for having me here today. And our third panelist is a health coach and nutrition advisor. She has helped many people in weight management and lifestyle issues reversal. She believes in a six health uh, of living. Please welcome Jyoti Mandal. Thank you, thank you, Toastmaster Sayush. It's my pleasure to be here. I would like to welcome all the panelists here. And from and now, we will begin that begin the discussion on the topic: the two sides of body positivity. So my first question is to Sri Lakshmi. As an image consultant, what is your perspective on body positivity? Thank you, Postmaster Ayush, for this question. For me, the body positivity is being happy and confident in whatever body you are blessed with. You are blessed with. Most people have different opinions about their body positivity by seeing their favorite celebrities, whether it's Deepika Padukone or Ranveer Singh. Some people think that I want body like Ranveer Kapoor or these kind of things they are running in my in my mind they will do extreme out of the box like doing too much of workout to gain body like their favorite celebrities and consume a lot of foreign foods protein shakes 
this kind of thing. But this is not acceptable. They're doing it as part of their project, like crore, multi, multiple crores were invested on celebrities. So they're doing this kind. If they're normal human being like us, they would have definitely been, they would have definitely been like us only. That is the main thing people, people feel. They're seeing them, they feel underconfident. Being an image consultant, it's my point of view is we should uh, think of that point of view also. And very, very important is you should accept the body. We are born and blessed with it. And if you want to have a healthy body and a mind, it's very, very good to have exercise. It makes you makes us feel body calm and mind also calm. That is one thing. And one thing, if you want to have and one and one thing is, please love your body. Whatever body you are blessed. And some children I have observed cursing, the fighting with their parents because of you. I am this. I am this. You married my mom, so I have. I have. I, have, I am little bit on heavier side. This is not right. Thing. Please love the body you are born and blessed with. That is the first step of success. And if you accept it, will fall in love with yourself. As I always mention, self love is very important in every human being, for everyone. What you, Toshmaster Ayush? Thank you, Shilachi. Okay, so Dhani, I would like to ask you, like Shilachi, you mentioned that people see a lot of people on the web, on the internet, uh, showing their their exercise and diet. But I would like to ask you, is it not beneficial for people to know, like, what are the different options in which they can improve their body, or like, is it harming the people more? Okay, so uh, with respect to Exercise? Are you asking me that? Yes, with respect to the exercise and different diet that we have in the world now. I feel that we are living in this world where we want to live up to the society's norms and expectation. Don't you all agree to me in this aspect? If my friend is doing intermittent fasting, oh, she's doing it. Even I want to do it. Even I want to lose weight. But does your body support that? That's the question that you need to ask yourself and your body. I feel that diet and have and doing fasts and doing having a stipulated diet form with all the plenty of diets that we have in the world today with 75 days challenge, intermittent fasting for that matter. It depends on a person's choice and body. Just because your friend is doing it doesn't mean that you're also supposed to do it. And that can also, to a certain extent, if you, if you, eat in a particular manner and if you have a diet where you want to eat junk food and you want to eat everything but then you're also challenging yourself that no 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 I also I want to reduce weight and hence I'm going to do this challenge for some time now what happens is when you start eating again you start eating the junk food again your body does not absorb it now once the body does not absorb it hence you again start gaining and you'll be like oh my god I did this particular form of diet but it did not work out for me so diet is nothing but having a good lifestyle and eating good food and healthy food. It does not mean that you are not supposed to eat chole kulcha for that matter. If you're not supposed to eat junk food for that matter, you're supposed to include every aspect in your food, but make sure that there are certain limitations to it as well. It's not like you just keep eating and harming your body. So I feel that exercise and diet is good, but do what suits your body rather than what you get inspired by people. Thank you, Dhani, for sharing the light on on dieting and exercising. Now, Jyoti, as a health coach, like, what do you think? Like, how is this concept of body positivity accepting however you are impacting people's lives? Thank you so much, Ayush. So uh, as a health coach, uh, I see a lot of uh, people are um, uh, having different opinions on their body type, like uh, self-body, uh, like body positivity. So it's good to accept their own uh, uh, body, whatever the shape, size they are, because uh, there are a few things which we cannot change, like uh, color, height, uh, but we can change shape. Uh, the way we look, right? But what I feel is there are three things. Negative body image, say, uh, positive body image. Third thing is positive body image with good health. So a lot of people think that positive body image is good. This will help in emotional health as well because the way we feel 
it affects our emotional health right if we are feeling good talking some positive affirmation about our own body we are feeling better in our own way but the, it doesn't mean that we are healthy internally it's very important to uh, work on physical health as well along with feeling uh, about our own uh, like positive positive body image so that's what i feel it's um, in, it's important to understand our about, understand our own body type uh, and also as um, uh, the uh, panelists too, like Dhwani and Sri Lakshmi mentioned that uh, uh, it's important to understand what suits your body. And uh, one more thing I would like to mention, in our olden generation, 90% of diseases didn't exist and 90% of packaged foods were not there in the store, uh, supermarket. The way we are eating now, we are redefining that as diet, but it's not a diet, it's just eating healthy food, just like our nani and dadi used to eat. And now we have changed completely about instant food like Maggi, uh, and then uh, packaged foods, chocos, cornflakes, all these came in the, the supermarket and we are adapting that. And now we are going back, redefining as a diet. Thank you, Jyoti, for telling us how exercising has to be included uh, along with body positivity also. Now, Shilakshmi, I would like to ask you, like, whenever uh, someone tells that, tells, if uh, someone suffers with a body image issue, how convenient it is to tell them that you have to work on your health. Definitely. If they are not comfortable with their body. Huh. And they most don't have, uh, say, fast routine for exercise or diet for someone who are not comfortable with their own body first we should work on their internal issues not on the body like not uh, not outside uh, like if you uh, they will compare that themselves with the, someone like might be you are shaking from childhood bullying they might have suffering from that if someone is having those kind of issues for those kind of people they should accept that this is what i have this is my i am blessed with it i should love it as image consultant also uh, we always tell people please love your body love yourself self love is very very important whatever you are you are blessed that is the biggest asset love yourself accept yourself you are which is the body you are blessed with and if you are if you are having certain if you want to look if you want if you are if you practice certain uh, self love and you will feel definitely you will feel confident within yourself and you will work on yourself like whether it's you want can you can be live a healthy life more than everything is happy and healthy life for that you can work on your mind like meditation and mild exercise like not that you want to become thin you want healthy body and mind that is one thing and make sure that whatever body you are having, you should be able to carry yourself very, very well. As image consultant, that is my opinion. You should want, whether you are skinny, it doesn't bother. If you are confident about yourself, if you are able to carry yourself very, very well, that is very important. You should be able to carry yourself very, very well, confident in front of other people. If some people uh, com compare themselves with, oh, he's she's very uh, skinny, I am a little bit healthy. Don't do that. This is not good for you, good for your health. This is not good for anyone. This spoils your mind, your health. Please accept yourself. Fall in love with yourself. Please practice self-love. This is my opinion as an uh, image consultant. What do you, Ayush? Thank you, Shilakshmi. Now, Dhoni, as a soft skill trainer, I would like to ask you that, as you actually mentioned, that we should first on a self-love before a physical health. So, like, can that benefit people to develop their skills and confidence? Okay. Absolutely. If you start loving yourself, the first thing to do to develop your, a skill is to understand yourself. If you want to develop a skill, you need to know what are you and what are the things that you need to work on, basically. Now, when I work with my clients, I start my session by asking them, tell me about yourself. Tell me good points about yourself. What do you love about yourself? And the worst part is people can't even speak. They're like, don't ask me such questions, Dhwani. I don't know about myself. Probably my friend will describe me in a better manner. That's where we lack. So the first thing, like how Sri Lakshmi mentioned, is to understand yourself. Now, we people 
we absorb negativity very quick, quickly. Now, is my five fingers same? No, right? Each of them are different. So in the similar manner, everybody is different and every body type, every person's pers perspective as well as mentality differs. So before making any judgment about yourself based on what others perceive you, see yourself from your lenses and think that what am I? What is the skill that I want to learn? Who am I as an individual? That's something, that's when you start your journey of improving yourself and start your journey with positive mindset that will lead to a positive and healthy lifestyle. So that's my take on this. Thank you, Dhoni. So as Sri Lakshman Dhoni mentioned that we should first focus on us, on us in our self rather than our outer physical self. And we can gain confidence from that. But now I wonder, and I want, I want to ask you, Jyoti, if that can create any complications, further complications with people, if they take too much time in achieving this, what will, how will it impact their health? If they're already in a not so healthy condition. So what I feel is, whatever they mentioned, I agree with that because um, it will take time to work on physical health, at least uh, to see some changes. It will take uh, three months or uh, two to three months. Before that, if we start talking about ourselves uh, in a positive way, like uh, I'm good, I'm healthy. That means we are passing some instruction to our own mind saying that, um, okay, I, I'm healthy within, I'm working on my body, I will overcome all my health issues. So it's very important to talk about ourselves in a positive way and then parallelly work on our physical health. It's not about just talking and leaving aside uh, everything, uh, all the other pillars. Uh, so I feel that Parallelly, we have to work on our um, diet, nutrition, workout, mental health. So all the pillars together will help to stay healthy. Thank you, Jyoti, for for highlighting why we should focus more on. Uh, we should focus on physical health as well. Now, uh, Shilakshima, I would like to ask, like, I went through a post once, which was talking about a fitness routine or being healthy. And I saw a comment below that. That said, what about body, body positivity? So, like, what should we make out of such cases where people are going to the extremes? Like, they are just telling people who are uh, showing, telling something about physical health. They're just commenting that, but body positivity is important. So how would you try to, what are your views on that? Can you repeat to again? Sorry. Yes. So there was a post on Instagram, which was talking about some fitness routine. Mm -hmm. And I saw a comment down, which said, what about body positivity? So in, what are your views on this perspective of people? Like people are thinking that anything relating to fitness takes the power of body positivity away. Okay. Thank you, Ayush. But most of the issue with youngsters is that they will follow social, they will follow social media and they want their body like them, like social media influencers or bodybuilders or celebrities, these kind of things. I had seen mostly with youngsters and teenagers and people who are in early 20s. Yeah. The comments many people will post, but they want their body like comments many people will post random comments also social media trolling happens but now coming to the uh, teenagers mostly issue with uh, teenagers and i feel people who are in 30 uh, mostly teenagers and youngsters want their body like their favorite celebrities bodybuilders these kind of things as i said they will do extreme to do this ahead of so they will do too much their body they will work out in gym more than their body accepts it um, that and they will consume a lot of protein shake. They never realize that, that this is not some people students doesn't hear it. It's not their age to teenager students doesn't listen to parents also. They're not as I observed 
if if when someone eats food for one day more food for they will starve for more than 16 hours that's they will try to compensate it thinking that i will i have ate more on previous day that kind of things i had observed in uh, this kind of thing and social media influencers we can't stop from them definitely we can't stop that do, don't watch social media please that everyone will watch is if you say no they will get more tempted to watch it one thing we can do as people as an image consultant or anyone in some colleges they will try to educate students being you you will be, you will be confident you will be whatever you are if you want to achieve your goal you should be yourself not trying to have someone else body uh, have someone else body be your your body you should be your body your soul if you have your body you will be yourself not trying to, uh, if you try to be someone you will definitely not uh, gain it uh, th that is the something like you should uh, for my in my opinion we should invite thin, some students like this kind of panel discussions like being yours be yourself or uh, some in colleges also it should lecture uh, professor should invite any people to train about body positivity don't influence by social media the, these kind of things i feel we should introduce in the future this is my opinion thank you shilakshmi for sharing how the Social media is creating a, a worsening impact on individuals' health and their image, how they see themselves. Uh, Vani, uh, I would like to ask you, like, is it possible to just limit uh, everything on social media? Like, make people, uh, make people understand that do, don't go according, according to what you see on social media as you are working in soft skills. So is it possible to make people help to just not be drawn to what social media shows no it's not possible to stop anybody from doing anything to be very honest if you want to watch something and you want to idolize Karina Kapoor you will idolize her it's like you tell your brain not to do something your brain will do that it is that one thing we humans follow you cannot stop anybody from doing anything but what you can do is you can show them two directions. You can show them two ways. Look, either you want to have a body like Karina Kapoor, you have one. Or either you be confident of who you are and be authentic and be yourself. The decision and the choice is towards the person and we are nobody to stop anybody for that matter. However, in social media, if we talk about very idealized figures, there are people who are plus size models. There is one social media influencer style with Sakshi. She is she is uh, she is plumpy and she's a plus size model. The way she dresses and the way she styles herself, it is just amazing. So it's all about whom you follow. Are you following the right person? That's the question that we all need to ask. Maybe we can have this kind of discussions with the people, especially the teenagers, on telling them and guiding them as to are you doing uh, justice to your body or are you doing justice to your thought process by following the right person and idealizing the right person. That's the question that I feel we need to ask them and that's what we need to make those kids and people around us understand. Social media has a really, uh, you know, in today's world, it has the massive impact and we cannot stop anybody from doing anything. So, yeah. Thank you, Dhani, for mentioning about that. Yes, uh, like you mentioned about plus size models. So, my next question is, according to that only, if people come on screens and see, like, the plus size models getting all the fame, like, would they be focused on their health? So that I would like to ask you, Jyoti. Like, will right. this make people more, feel more demotivated because they won't get any recognition for just going out and working out? And they are see plus size models being receiving all the fame. Right. Um, as uh, Sri Lakshmi mentioned, that uh, uh, whatever body you are blessed with, be happy with that. But uh, influencing by someone who, uh, with what do you like to be or the, uh, which person you want to be? Uh, for example, Amir Khan uh, in Dangal movie, he was overweight because he had that, uh, I mean, he had that shoot, he has to appear that like that character. But once he got another uh, film, he lost weight 
and he had a good nutritionist trainer uh, and he had put massive effort behind efforts behind that so how do you want to be from whom you are influencing for example uh, i am influenced by a plus size model uh, for example if i am overweight that means i'm not working okay they are also like that that means i'm just seeing them and walking in that way no problem they are uh, like that people are accepting them so uh, people will accept me also it's not about that it's about in my mind how i want to be do i want to be fit it's not about people accepting me it's about i am accepting myself self acceptance self esteem self respect our own body image how is how is it so it's very important to be um, to understand what do you want to be how do you want to look having a image in your mind so and be healthy with it thank you jyoti for mentioning how how whom we idolize is very important so shilakshmi like i would like to ask you like is there a way to create such a perspective in people's mind to be inclined to love their own bodies and still th think about getting healthy how do we put that perspective in people's mind can you sorry i can you repeat once again yeah uh, how do we put this perspective of loving our own body and still wanting to be healthy in in people's mind so that they are able to achieve a more balanced lifestyle i always say i even heard from someone who is very uh, very disciplined person treat your body like a temple if you treat your body like a temple body and mind body you should exercise mind exercise brisk 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 exercise whatever is your preference if some people like to go gym to keep their body uh, only to exercise not for six pack seven packs only to keep healthy and for mind meditation is very important if you treat body like a temple body will definitely respond to you it gives positive response if you if your body uh, respond if you if your body is like that you, you will feel confident you will love yourself you will carry yourself you will carry yourself very very well if you carry you one thing i had observed most of the people who are uh, they will not able to achieve what they want because they think that they they will self pity themselves oh i am i am she she is good looking she had gone this she got this i'm not good looking i didn't got this though this is not it is how you treat yourself if you love if you respect if you confident yourself definitely you can achieve what you are if you uh, as i told in the beginning if you treat your body like a temple body will also respond and spiritually also uh, great it will throw light on you it will, you will be blessed with positive full full of positive vibes positive vibrations that is my i always think of that don't come and one thing is i feel please don't compare your body with whom you are, whom you think like whether people around you or any celebrities that is the one thing if you compare yourself that is the worst thing that is the worst thing you are doing for yourself and your body and for your growth also please uh, be yourself i always say be yourself authentic to yourself what do you wish thank you shilakshmi so as, as you rightly mentioned that we should treat our body like a temple we should keep we should love it and keep it clean and healthy so dhoni i would like to ask you like how will matlab how does this how does loving our own body and keeping it healthy result in a more confident individual is how will how can it how can an individual be more confident by loving their own body and keeping it healthy thank you so yes i believe that uh, confidence comes from within and uh, i have been somebody if i share my personal story i was somebody who was who was slightly towards the fluffy side of when i was in my college days and school days when i came back home and i entered you know when i came back home and i went for a family function people used to just walk up to me and talk to me about oh my god dhwani you've become so fat oh my god dhwani look what happened to your hair you've becoming bald do something about it and when people state the obvious the confidence deteriorate so what do we do then how do we manage ourselves and first of all you're being so confident and you're just going and going to social gatherings and at that point of time if somebody gives you such compliments do you stand up for yourself i don't think so 
because at that point of time we feel very uh, we feel very shattered for that matter because i have had this feeling what i have been through and what i have grown so far what i have understood so far with these experiences is that just love yourself and love your flaws that will show your confidence be who you are and don't set into this lenses of the society's norms stand up for your own norms and stand up for your own values that is something that will lead you to confidence with your appearance with respect to your inner self and outer self self image is really very essential like how jyoti also mentioned be yourself be authentic and see things and perceive things from your lenses don't let others get into your head i know saying it's very easy like you must be saying that dhwani you're just saying it so easily trust me i have lived this and experience is talking so i believe that you know confidence comes from within and no matter what people say if you if you have accepted yourself that's when you will stand up for yourself that's my take thank you dhwani for stating how we can develop more confidence with respect to body image and health now you see one thank you should to you is like is it possible like what are the steps in which body positivity and healthy living can go hand in hand so uh, i i would like to talk about uh, one example where um, uh, one of my client he uh, he came to me where he was around 132 kg and his ideal weight bmi uh, is uh, 75 so when he uh, he said about uh, his own body image it feels positive about uh, because even though people talk about uh, him like you are overweight in his own mind he is so confident that uh, okay, no matter i'm healthy uh, i'm just looking my appearance is maybe uh, on the heavier side but uh, i'm healthy but when he got his blood reports uh, he he was shocked to know that his cholesterol was high all the parameters were in the high range and then he started working on his own body so the steps what i uh, what you have asked is uh, first of all it's about healthy diet because diet and nutrition plays 80% role uh, and uh, workout works 20% role in fitness so uh, diet nutrition workout stress management sleep quality is very important because nowadays i see a lot of people um, think that it is very cool to sleep around 12 31 2 uh, by just browsing something on their phone or laptop actually most of our hormones balance during sleep it, it is in between 10 pm to 3 am so if we are sleeping at 12 31 2 that means hormonal imbalance comes into the picture and hence the health issues right so sorry so it's very important to focus on all the pillars like uh, diet nutrition workout stress management sleep quality and also mental health and that's how you feel positive about your own body ayush i want to add one thing what jyoti had mentioned as if you yes, did i visited a doctor he is a family doctor it's very jyoti what jyoti had told it's very very right every human being should sleep at least at least at 11 pm we should go at 11 pm and wake up uh, me should and we need minimum 8 hours of sleep that is very very important doctor told me you do i know you sleep late so Uh, you should you should work on it you should go to bed at exactly at 11 pm he he would told me to put uh, sleep track in my mobile also that is very very important otherwise it's affects in our old age also no no only every we should go, at least we need we should to wake up at 7 7 am that you and i I'm, honestly before my sleep habit also is not from good now after uh, taking few days back after i started going exactly at 11 pm this this i started following it Thank you, Jyoti, for mentioning it. It's very important. Thank you, Shilakshmi. So that is the end of my questions. If any of you panelists would like to add anything, you are most welcome. I would like to add one thing here: is body positivity is fine, and exercise is also good. But set realistic goals for yourself. Don't set goals which you don't feel uh, you will be able to do justice and be consistent about. i have had such incidents with me and i used to get pumped up that oh my god i want to go to gym i want to lift up 5 kg of dumbbells and next day i want to be so powerful no it does not work like that this 
energy that we have, it's only for a stipulated point of time. After that, we start becoming inconsistent. So try to start small. Start by taking 10 minutes break. Go for walk for 10 minutes. And then again, again, increase your time for walk. Once you get the interest, once you start that habit, you set a realistic goal for yourself, you will feel motivated and you will not procrastinate on yourself rather than, you know, just sitting at home and just being on the screen. So set realistic examples and love yourself, love your flaws, be healthy. It's not about doing diets and it's not about only exercising. Eat everything, whatever you want to eat. Eat chocolates, eat junk, but make sure that everything has a limit. Nothing, anything to excess is really bad. So that's my take on it. And one thing I want to add, Ayush, most of the people have opinion that uh, this our natural food, which our grandparents had introduced it, it's not good for them. They will take a lot of, uh, to burn hunger, they will take tablets, those kind of foreign foods, stereo, steroids, I think, and uh, protein shake. Those is not acceptable. It has a lot of side effects. <laughs> Please uh, have the food which you uh, which have been having. It, we, are, we should have what we are having from the day we are born. Our body is used to that. That is very important. That is, uh, we should have, don't, uh, what we have, uh, when we are born, what food we are used, uh, we are having. It, no, also we should have it. We shouldn't change it now in the, uh, in our 20s or 30s. Most people do it after coming to certain age, after joining for work, this kind of things. I have one point to add here. So a lot of people, when they uh, want to lose weight, they go to gym, uh, they do uh, workouts, high intensity workouts for one hour, two hours. And they, a lot of people start thinking that they will lose weight. Yes, they lose weight, but in an unhealthy way. So uh, at one uh, point, Bernie mentioned that uh, people lose weight, but at uh, once they stop, they gain all the weight back. So it's of no use. Yeah, that means you are just putting a lot of efforts which is of uh, which which goes in vain right so it's about fixing the root cause having proper food workout and then uh, and then um, uh, heal or fix those uh, health issues it's about internally you have to balance your hormones and whatever health conditions are there and then you lose weight in a healthy way so this is one point and the second point uh, is um about the nutrition, right? So as I'm a uh, certified nutrition advisor, um, as uh, Sri Lakshmi mentioned about uh, protein shakes or nutrition, yeah, it is bad. Uh, steroids are bad. Yes, it is bad. Uh, because it's all about natural food. Uh, but nowadays, the soil infertility is more because of growing, pollution, uh, growing population and pollution. Uh, what food we are getting nowadays is not same as earlier. So if you eat uh, 10 to 12 varieties of vegetables, organic vegetables, then you get almost uh, the required amount of vitamins and minerals. But it is not possible to eat 10 to 12 um, varieties of vegetables in one day. But earlier, you are getting the same amount of vitamins and minerals in uh, two to three or four vegetables in olden generation. But why the, the gap? It is because of soil infertility, infertility uh, pesticides, herbicides, the chemicals which are being sprayed on the vegetables. So that is how those um, uh, grow, growth hormones are mimicking our own hormones and then health issues are growing nowadays. So it's very important to have organic foods if possible. I know they write organic, but that is not completely organic. Anyhow, something is better than nothing. What I feel. Uh, so good organic food and then uh, the other pillows exercise and the good nutrition. If there are some gaps uh, based on the blood parameters, a uh, lot of people are facing the uh, IC uh, vitamin deficiencies like vitamin D deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency. If there are gaps, it's very important to bridge that nutritional gap and then uh, lose weight in a healthy way. That's how self body positive uh, image will be there in our own. Thank you. So, like, I think we have established that body positivity should not work in extremes. It should not be like we we would be of any any size of or any anything that that we are deteriorating our health or that we should just go and do intense workout only. It should be a balance of the both. Something which is more realistic, something which we enjoy, and something just sustainable. So, I think we have established 
uh, quorum there that it should be a balance of both loving your our body and keeping it healthy in a realistic in a way in a way that we love doing it over and over again so that is my discussion the floor is now open to audience if you want to ask any questions to the panelists please raise your hand yes i think sudarshan wants so, to ask i heard a couple of panelists talking about the good old days where food was better and life was better would any of the panelists be able to throw some light on what was the average life expectancy of an indian as recently as 1995 and then we can talk about what is the average life expectancy today and therefore why food today is better than why food was for back then anyone Since you participated in a panel where you stated that food that we eat today is not so great as food used to be in the past. Yeah, I would like to talk about it. Uh, sorry, yeah. I forgot your name. Uh, so, life average life expectancy in olden days, uh, in nineties, it was around uh, uh, seventy to eighty years and. 90 years i can say but now it's uh, 60 or 50 because a lot of youngsters grossly is... optimistic grossly optimistic it was 58 in 1992 it is 71 today so food in fact has become better that's the only thing i want to say right now because i will get an opportunity to speak later when we come on panels it is imperative that we do some research before we state any of these things thank you thank you in my opinion i i feel that um, because i've seen um, some uh, uh, i've seen uh, some videos where uh, we all know that uh, pesticides and herbicides are being sprayed Uh, and the soil infertility is also uh, growing nowadays. So the food is good. The uh, the government is working on that. But the moment we are uh, the food is reaching our home, lot of nutrients are getting evaporated because uh, in the farm from the, it is fresh and uh, from there the moment it is reaching to our home, it's almost uh, uh, maybe fifteen to twenty days, right? So. Uh, after cooking cutting and washing the vegetables uh, what nutrition we are getting in our body is only 40 to 50% so in that way it is affecting our health so in olden days yes uh, if you say the life expectancy is, uh, was low maybe it's not about nutritional deficiency but because of uh, not much medical uh, research was there maybe uh, i'm not sure about that but uh, nowadays we see a lot of health issues just because of eating a lot of unhealthy food Right and nutritional deficiencies. That's my take. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you, Darshan, for your questions. Thank you, Jyoti, for answering. Any any other questions from the audience? So I have one question. Uh, so um, I'm hearing this talk about body positivity. So there is also a lot of uh, stigma with uh, you know people criticize those who do body shaming and all that, right? So like if you take today's discussion, um, on one hand we say be comfortable with your body. We are saying that it doesn't matter what clothes you want to wear, uh, you should not restrict yourself and all those kind of uh, gyan. On one hand, on the other hand we are saying oh no come in perfect shape. So, which uh, and this is a question particularly for maybe Dhwani or uh, Sri Lakshmi, uh, one of the image consultants can answer this question. On one hand, you are saying that you know be comfortable with your body, wear whatever you want, uh, don't let other people judge you. On the other hand, you are having a forty minutes panel discussion saying that come in shape. Uh, so, what uh, what exactly are we trying to do here? Like you are confusing me. Oh, uh, may I go first, Sri Lakshmi? Yes, thank you so much. So, firstly, I'm not an image consultant. I'm a soft skills trainer. But according to my knowledge, uh, we were having this discussion of uh, not particularly getting into shape. We were talking about healthy living, healthy lifestyle, not having that idealized body that we all want. And uh, for a matter of fact, yes. uh there are a lot of, there are a lot of criticism that we all have and uh, there are a lot of criticism with respect to how we look and how our body is perceived for that matter but the whole idea was 
that even though you are loving yourself and you are being yourself being authentic being original the one thing is to also have a healthy living and eating right food it's not about you becoming you are a- not uh, i lost uh, i lost we are not able to hear you dwani okay can you hear me now no dwani is audible to me no the last two words which is which she said something was there. yeah there was some bit which got lost which is okay yeah you can continue okay so what i am trying to convey here is it's not about getting into shape we were no, not mentioning about getting into shape we were only mentioning about eating right food and good nutrients because if you want to live longer and you want to have a good life you also need to get nutrients in your body so that's my take and sir you and i also tell people who mostly tell people don't be, uh, be it's okay to be in your own shape it's you should be confident you should love yourself you should uh, love yourself then only that is very important that is self love is important exactly. whatever body shape you are blessed with so shri lakshmi that's exactly the gyan that i'm talking about that we get okay. that love yourself and all that and then there are long uh, you know motivational talks about going to the gym and slimming down so it's very confusing for someone so should we slim down or should we not slim down should we continue to be fat which one are we promoting here right so that's the question and then one related question to what dhwani said uh, eating the right food right so if you ask someone like jyoti here she'll say ki eat kerala rice right because that is low carb and you should not but the problem is i come from east india and i love my basmati rice and i love my gobindo bhog rice which are high on calories so um my dad and my mom and my you know ancestors have eaten there and now you are telling me ki eat right means eat eat a kind of rice that you're that doesn't sound very you know for me so you know, what i was trying to convey by eating right food over here is uh, according to my knowledge okay jyoti you can add whatever you want to add but according to my knowledge what i meant was eat home cooked meal and whatever you're eating make sure you eat eat it properly my home meal um, dhwani a typical bengali diet sounds like this uh, white rice uh, boiled potatoes uh, fried fish uh, dal with a lot of butter and gurghi uh, and i'm pretty sure that jyoti by now she is getting a heart attack thinking that okay this is not a right diet i know Sir, new... i want to add one thing even being a mangorean i also eat those kind of foods i mm-hmm. eat a lot of south indian foods we mm-hmm. should i told in the i told right in the panel discussion we should yes. eat food we shouldn't change our diet as we grow into coming particularly we should eat particular food which our ancestors in, introduced to us that is very important which our ancestors introduced our food and we should that is very important we should consume those kind of foods only not okay. other shilashmi hum i'm just stating my question was for jyoti because she is a nutritionist mm-hmm. yeah so as long yeah i would like to add as long as you are comfortable with your body as long as you are healthy by eating home cooked food white rice potato that's fine if you have a goal to lose weight some modifications in your uh, food will go and yes vani also rightly mentioned home cooked food is fine and avoid junk food because of that um junk food it is adding not only calories but it is not doing good for our body it is not adding any nutrition to our body why to uh, why to eat when it is not good for our body right so, so a lot of potatoes and rasgulla is fine again yeah see as long as i mentioned as long as you are uh, comfortable with your body if you don't have any goal as such or if you uh, are healthy then fine if you are uh, for example if sugar levels are high and if you are eating lot of rasgullas it is not sinking right fair enough thank you, thank you sort of like uh, we are running out of time but yes we can take one more questions and don't worry we will be connecting with the panelists again after the discussion ends so like one last question i think can come from uh, neha okay thanks ayush and my question is to jyoti so um I recently went for a health checkup and I was uh, told that I'm vitamin B deficient, vitamin D deficient, and a couple of other vitamins. And I was given uh, so many tablets. Like you're supposed to take this, this, this on a daily basis, like two in the morning, three in the night, and blah blah blah. And I'm someone who has never had tablets. Like I'm anti-tablet person. So what would you say to that? Like, uh, is it okay to consume so many tablets because it was recommended by a very, very good doctor? Is it okay? Not okay? 
what would your take be what i feel is medicines are something uh, which is synthesized in labs those are synthetic uh, food or nutrition so those are organic which are plants and food based extract right so if you can uh, get it from your food why to take medicines you you can take medicines if something is at extreme level if vitamin d is very low that means you can just uh, increase the value by taking medicines if, but if the value is somewhere in the middle and that means you don't have to go for medicines you can just uh, substitute that with your food which is high in vitamin d high in uh, vitamin b12 but then it's just supplements right like i mean why not just take them supplements is it going to cause any harm supplements are different medicines are different supplements are food and uh, as i mentioned it's uh, uh, again there are two types of supplements uh, organic and synthetic uh, medicines are synthetic which is uh, made in labs as i mentioned so uh, you can get that vitamin d or vitamin b12 uh, with the supplements and medicines also uh, but what i feel is better to go with the nutritional supplement because uh, in the long run it will not have any effect but a lot of people taking uh, some vitamin d or vitamin b or antibiotics they are disrupting their gut health as well if they are taking for the long term right so what i feel is get it from uh, food or uh, supplements it is better and medicines you can get it but if your uh, level is very low uh, you see if um, for example uh, high fever or uh, uh, low energy levels right extreme condition at that time take medicines don't wait for uh, that uh, two to three months so that my nutrition will help me no uh, you have to go for medicines when it is at extreme level but uh, when you are healthy just uh, by seeing the blood report you have to take medicines okay. thanks jyoti thank, thank you thank you jyoti and thank you for all the questions i see alok and muta also had some questions but since we are running out of time i would request you to send all the questions to the panelists we will get back to you with all the answers don't worry anyone in the audience if you want any questions you can join us later or ask uh, or ask me ask uh, send the send forward the questions and i will ask the panelists and get back to you so here i would like to thank all the audience audience for bearing with the panel, panel discussion and all the panelists shilakshmi dhwani and jyoti for joining us and providing such valuable insights to our to this discussion on this topic which which has been going on for some time now so thank you again very much this is the end of my discussion thank you for being here thank you so much thank you toastmaster ayush that was a very interesting session that you moderated with our three lovely ladies of the gabbies toastmaster dhwani toastmaster jyoti and toastmaster shri lakshmi thank you so much for your time and valuable inputs thanks a lot and now moving on to the most uh, interesting session i would say and which is extremely important for all of us to grow learn and kind of uh, progress in this journey so yes uh, let's start the evaluation session without any further ado and to do this i would like to call upon the first evaluator of the panel moderator one toastmaster mamta um, toastmaster shri toastmaster lakshmi sujata on stage yeah. over to you lakshmi Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Neha, and Toastmaster Mamta, as a moderator today on a very serious and important topic that you brought up. Lovely questions, brilliant answers by the panelists because you had a fabulous panelist with you, people who are experienced in their field. Now, as a moderator, let me tell you, this is one of my favorite projects as well, and. i think in both my parts i have done this twice because i really love the essence of this project this project comes with um i would say it is a mixture or it is an amalgamation of many other projects one active listening second q and a how you handle q and a third one is how you manage time right this is a combination of all these projects together now coming to a moderator there are certain uh qualities or there are certain attributes that a moderator should have and today did i see it yes i did see a few of those qualities 
let me see what are the uh, let me just share with you what are the main points that i saw today one you were an active listener now why do i say you were an active listener after every question that you asked and after they answered after each of the panelists answered that question i did see that you were summarizing it or you were giving your viewpoint there now and you also tried to derive questions based on the answers that was given by the panelist which was good you know you were actively listening to what was happening second thing as a moderator it is very important that you are very well prepared on the topic it's not just about what the panelist have to say it is also about what the moderator prepares on that topic i did see that as well now let me come to some of the very important areas of improvement and here comes the time management on the time management sector uh, my apologies but i would like to say that we were a little behind because ideally in a panel discussion you should have time allocated for question answers from the audience because audience engagement is again important the main reason you are conducting this program or this panel discussion is for the audience to understand or for the audience to understand why are you doing this at the end of the day right uh so i think the time management could have been better and as a moderator as i said research is important equally with that the terminologies that you use is also important they are panelists and not panel like you address them as panel 1 panel 2 panel 3 no they are panelists each of those members are panelists okay and another thing that i am not sure if you had taken into consideration was were these questions shared with the panelists well in advance if you had probably that one issue where i think one of the panelists you had asked them a question on agriculture but then she said she was not sure of it and it had to be passed on probably that kind of ambiguities would not have occurred so overall to summarize i would say that i wish that you could try reconsider redoing this project once again because one of the main criteria which is time management was not met okay other than that active listening was great thank you yeah you're there yes i'm here thank you uh, to master lakshmi for that detailed evaluation and now i'd like to call upon our evaluator to uh, to dtm sudarshan for his evaluation over to you dtm sudarshan thank you very much fellow toast masters and guests the title of our speakers today was panel moderator there are two keywords that we need to look at one is what is panel what is moderation a panel is a group or a board of people who come together to discuss a topic what is moderation moderation is the art and science of ensuring that all viewpoints get due time on stage to be displayed so today we heard a topic which was very hotly debated these days which is on body positivity and body shaming and therefore the perils there so i would like to plunge into this evaluation from the perspective of enabling our panel moderator to improve upon the next time he ever attempts to do this kind of project first and foremost the way one chooses the panel is very critical we had this panel which had three people who were all in sync with the opinion that body positivity is the need of the hour therefore the second part of the word panel moderation the moderation bit went out the window right at the start but there was no need for moderation all the three panelists were agreeing on every single point second could the panel moderator have done some things differently of course the answer is yes the questions could have been so framed to insight to elicit and to excite the panelists so that they could take anti order positions which would have then led to him displaying his skills as a moderator in trying to ensure each voice is heard if you don't believe me in the evening today switch on your tv and there will be one guy shouting at the screen saying ganesh the reason why he does that is because everybody 
on the panel should get excited and should get involved in the discussion. And that is the skill of a panel moderator. The other thing that happened, which I witnessed today, and I'm sorry I'm not following the sandwich method as we are advised to follow, because I believe there is ample scope for improvement. The second thing that I realized was about 20% of the discussion time was what the moderator brought. The rest of the 80% was firmly controlled by the three ladies because they were coming with opinion after opinion after opinion, all of which was in concord with the question, which meant that as audience members, we didn't see a panel discussion or a panel debate. What we heard was three people reiterating the same points over and over and over again. If one said you need to be happy with your body, the other said you need to eat to make sure that your body is great. Then the third person said, yes, I agree with the two of them. And that, therefore, ensured that this debate did not take place in the form of a panel debate. It was more like three people telling us A, B, and C are all the same, and therefore, we are all saying the same. All in all, I would like to tell our panel moderator that there is ample scope for improvement. This project must be repeated because the way it has happened today in my opinion, as an evaluator, I cannot claim that the objectives have been met. And therefore, I would firmly say that this project has to be done once more. Thank you. And back to you, President Thank you, DTM Sudarshan. Yes, we are all here to learn and we will. Thanks so much for your valuable inputs. Um, can we have the timer report before we launch the polls? Uh, Toastmaster Gihan, can you give us the uh, timer report? Yes, thank you, uh, Toastmaster Neha. Uh, may I need to share or just say this enough? Uh, you can just let us know if everyone was well with yeah, the time. Yeah. Uh, only that evaluator DTM Sudars Sudars should only. Uh, uh, within the time period, other all out of disqualified. I mean, the total, both panel discussion and first evaluation, disqualified only DTM Sudarshad only qualified with the timing. All right, that's a very interesting timer report that we had today. Thanks so much, Toastmaster Gihan. Uh, so do we have, no, so we, we would not be able to have polls today. Uh, all right. Um, I think it was a very interesting session today. Uh, Sunday morning started off with great energy, enthusiasm, and amazing panel moderators and panelists with some very critical evaluations that we had today. Yes, indeed. We're taking back a lot of learnings from this session today. And... Um, Yes, I would love to get feedbacks from the members and guests present in the meeting today. Can we have some feedbacks? Um, Mohammed Abbas? Yeah, good morning. Yes. Really, um, thank you very much for an opportunity to participate in such a wonderful uh, discussion with the entire uh, team. So really, all the panelists as well as uh, your team, you know, they are delivering their good information. It's very motivated to me. Yes, but I know uh, recently I delivered a speech on stress management uh, to uh, to my club. I am the member of uh, Jitta Tamil Toastmaster Club. So that I noticed when I read, you know, when we deliver a speech, I read a lot of information over the books as well as uh, online. That one third of uh, diseases uh, caused by the stress, it's either uh, directly or indirectly. So what the panelists discussed here, you know, uh, the, all the points addressed that uh, how be positive in our life and successful in our career. Really, I'm very thank you. And uh, I'm looking for that uh, another meeting, the similar subject will be in uh, upcoming days. Thank you. Thank you for all the team. Thanks so much for your input, Toastmaster uh, Muhammad. Thank you. Uh, we love having you back in our meetings. Thanks so much. Um, I you. think Toastmaster uh, Alok Kumar had a question so if you still want to ask you feel feel free to ask we still have a few panelists on board so master alok yeah please unmute yourself yeah uh, thanks neha no no i actually i was having a different uh, like uh, one question i was having uh, but not really questions like uh, 
I was having opinion on that. Uh, uh, to uh, in the last, like uh, I was really enjoying the very first panel discussions, and in the in the end, some question was asked, like, are we really uh, talking about the uh, uh, toxic positive? And in which the panel they responded, I really felt that. Uh, uh, I wanted to add my opinion because uh, in every society, any organization, any family, any country, any state for that matter, everywhere there is a problem and challenges, uh, any part of that, we are having different kinds of, today might be in our country, corruption is that one problem. Uh, pollution is might be another problem. Traffic might be another problem. But other country, we are, when we are referring to other countries, the stern countries, they might be having different problem and challenges. When we go into their shoes, they 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 look into our shoes and they say that they, they uh, we as a Eastern countries are doing better. So I think uh, uh, we should always uh, look into that what lens we are looking at, and the way that uh, moderation was going on, like talking about positivity. So we should talk about the positive, and that will that's the way we all grow and looking at the positive rather than draining out our neg negative, uh, rather than focus on our negativity, it will drain our energy. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Alok, for your valuable inputs. Yes, indeed. I thoroughly enjoyed today's meeting simply for the fact that we had a lot of learning Sunday morning filled with learnings. And I officially adjourn the special meeting today. Thank you one and all for joining the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have you a great much. day. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.